site, please stand by, channel one. Communication, switching to channel one. All right, here it comes, be ready. Switch controls to manual override. Yo, what's happening? It's Mikey. If you are interested in making a podcast, I cannot recommend Spotify for Podcasters enough. Dude, it is so freaking easy. Seriously, Spotify for Podcasters lets you create and then distribute your podcast, and you can even earn money from it, man. And you don't need any fancy equipment. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer, so no matter what your setup is like, you can just start creating today. And you can do video podcasts, too, like I do. Just download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to Spotify.com slash podcasters to get started today yo and welcome back to the one and only award-winning mikey podcast i am mikey (laughs) this is my show this show is actually a wild ride through the news true life stories conspiracies and so much more you never really know what you're gonna get on the mikey podcast like today is china dressing humans in bear suits also a body in a barrel a guy falls off falls off a building and fat people on planes Also, is a biblical disease making a comeback in Florida? We'll talk about all that. But speaking of Florida, I have a special guest on the show today that you're going to be very excited about. I've talked about this a few times. He's going to be a part of the, well, he's not going to be a part of it. He's part of the reason why I'm doing it. The Mikey Meetup this Tuesday at Sully's. My good friend, Ian Massengale, will be joining us on the show today. So that'll be a lot of fun. He'll jump on, talk about, you know, what's going on in his life, what's happening over in Florida, how life is, how things are. We'll catch up. We'll see what the hell he's doing. Uh, and again, we'll talk about the Mikey meetup. Make sure you come hang out with us. Come watch some uh, some comedy. It's going to be a, or, or actually here. Let me let me show you the let me show you the thing. There it is, right there. August eighth. You're a sub club member. You can see it. Looks look how pretty it is. Ian's out there. My logo. You know. Anyways, happy August eighth. Sully's seven p.m. is when I'm going to get out there. The show starts about eight o'clock. Comedy starts at eight. So uh, you're going to want to get out there a little bit early. Get a nice little spot to sit, hang out, and uh, get a couple drinks. Maybe eat some food. It's going to be a good time. Again, that's going to happen August 8th at Sully's in Rockland. So there's a few things I want to get to real quick before we actually get the show started here and jump into a few things. Uh, let's see. It's a round three of the Aftershock Festival Survival Kit is underway right now. It kicked off yesterday on my Instagram page. You can get the link below in this description, MikeyPodcast.com. You can just go over to my Instagram page, register to win, get yourself two pairs of tickets, to, two weekend passes for wristbands. For Aftershock for the entire weekend, well, actually, it's four, it's four days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You got Guns and Roses. You got Tool. You got Event Sevenfold. We got Corn. We got Limp Bizkit. We got, it's, it's insane how, how many bands are there, and it's going to be a freaking amazing weekend. Uh, but I got you some passes ready to go for that, and plus you'll get the Aftershock, the Mikey Podcast Aftershock Festival Survival Kit, which will help you get through the weekend. A hat, T-shirt. Uh, and, and, and all the things to help you survive water bottle, which you're going to need. I have that water bottle sitting right here because you can take this water bottle into aftershock and use it all weekend. Cause they give you free water. So you could fill it up. And you don't have to spend money on water and you don't have to worry about it. You can stay hydrated, all that good stuff. Uh, two more real quick things before we get into the show. These two things are super important. So fucking pay attention. First of all, if you haven't signed up for the Mikey report, why? I, I don't understand. If you, if you listen to the show, you support the show you like the content that I create, you should definitely be subscribed for the Mike Report. It's a weekly newsletter. I pro- barely send it out even weekly, but it's just a way to stay in touch and stay connected and for me to, to update you on things that you might have missed, things that are coming up and things that I'm working on. And plus, last week, like I added some new some news stories to it, talking about the blogs and things. So it is a pretty cool thing to sign up for. If you're a fan of this content and a fan of this show, you're going to probably want to sign up for that. It's 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 free. There's no reason not to. Link is in the description. Actually, it's real easy if you go over to MikeyPodcast.com. It's right there on the main page. So sign up, stay connected. And finally, speaking of signing up, join the sub club. I got to be honest with you. I know you're maybe you're a freeloader listening to this show, and that's fine too. I appreciate your support, no doubt. But the best way to, to really support the show, there's a few ways to support the show. And one of the best ways is to obviously join the sub club because I, I got to tell you, it, it, I can't do the show without the subscribers. I had someone tell me to stop asking for subscribers. Fuck you. Why would I stop asking for people to support the content that I'm creating? Look, here's everything for free. Just take it. It's that's, it, that's stupid. I'm not going to stop 
because it's important that you guys know that this that's how this show that's how I'm able to even do this is through I'm not making money off this this all, all the money that I, and not yet at least I'd like to but any money that comes in just goes back in to keep the show going so you know think about that I'm putting hours and hours of work in every single day to create content for you and I'm not making anything out of it it's this is I'm doing this for the passion and the love of it so if you can support it, that'd be great. I really do appreciate that. You can also uh, comment and um, rate the show. Those are huge. Like if you're listening on Apple and Spotify, those are huge. Just rating the show and leaving a review matters so much. So if you can help out and do those things, I do appreciate that. But more importantly, please join the uh, join the sub club and you get access to videos. You get you get early access to the podcast. You get access to the sub club chronicle, which is the, ex- the sub club exclusive. Uh, blog and a few other things that are on the way so it's all very cool and plus it's cheap man if you do it over at mikeypodcast.com you can sign up for 99 cents a week 2.99 a month 15 bucks for the quarter or 25 bucks for the whole year it's really really easy as opposed to being on spotify which is fine too if you're subscribed there as well uh, but you only get the videos on spotify you don't get access to everything else and it's 2.99 a month over there and i have no control over the prices on that and I can't help you. But there's like really nothing I can do if there's an issue with billing or anything. It's, like, it's all out of my hands. So the best thing for you to do is at mikeypodcast.com. But that's entirely up to you. I appreciate any support that you can give me. Um, so keep it up. Subscribe. Do the thing. Do the thing. Support the show. Support whatever. Support me. <laughs> support the show is all I'm saying. That's it. All right. So let's let's. You know what? I, I don't want to waste too much time. I have some news I got to get to. I already mentioned there's some weird shit going on in the world, so we got to touch on that before we get into Ian. But today is Wednesday, so we'll play the little Wednesday jingle for everybody who loves it's it. It's Wednesday. Hump day. day. I should get a little video to make. It's the middle of the week. It is the middle of the week. You're overworked and underpaid, and your boss is a dick. Your boss is a dick. Shipping can make or break a sale, so optimize how you ship your orders with ShipStation. They make it easy to automate and manage orders no matter how big your business grows. And they might even be able to help reduce shipping and warehouse costs. So optimize and keep up your momentum for growth with ShipStation. Sign up for your free 60-day trial now at ShipStation.com and use the code P-O-D. That's ShipStation.com with the code P-O-D. TIAA is on a mission. Why? Because 54% of Black Americans don't have enough savings to retire. So in collaboration with big name artists like Wyclef Jean, TIAA released Paper Right. New music inspiring a new financial future. With 100% of streaming sales going to a nonprofit that teaches students how to invest. Stream Paper Right now and help close the gap. And if your boss is a female, she may be a bitch or maybe you're the boss. So you could potentially be a dick or a bitch. And I just want to say one thing. <laughs> gay. That is gay. I don't know what this guy's feeling very 90s. Oh, oh my God. Before I even get started, that is what I wanted to tell you. This is, I got to put a link in the description for this. So I created, uh, if you listen, if, you, if you're a Spotify fan and you use Spotify for music, whatever, I created a BuzzBox playlist uh, on the Mikey Podcast Spotify page. Um, I, I don't think it's good. I don't know if it's on my podcast. I, I don't know, but it, it, I'll have to share it. I'll share a link to it. You got to check this out. I want to know what you guys think. Tell me what you want to add to this. There's some really good music, and it's mostly all 90s alternative stuff, but I threw in some a little bit of reggae here and there because that's just who I am. But it's like a soundtrack to my life, and it's really good. I had some people complain, like, where's the punk? Where's the metal? Where's the rap? That's a whole... I have to create different playlists for those. That's not what this is about. So if you if you want to go listen to some old school 90s stuff that you may not even have ever heard of or maybe even forgot about, the, like the flies got you where I want you, not a surf popular, like there's some really, really good stuff in there. Check it out. I'll put the link in the description so you can... So you can hear that. That's that's like... that's You can't say things are gay anymore because, you know, you were able to do that in the 90s, but not so much. Yikes! Jesus Christ, this lady's face is terrifying. Holy shit! Subclub can see this. Freeloaders, trust me, you're... Maybe you don't want to see it. Oh, that's terrifying. That's leprosy, folks. Right there. And get excited because it's making a comeback in sunny Florida. Yes? Leprosy, a disease straight out of the freaking Bible, has decided to make a comeback in the Sunshine State. Why? I don't know. People are getting it. Leprosy is disgusting. It's you get sores and, and you're weak and and what the fuck? 
We used to p- people of leper col- colonies back in the day. Like if you were a leper, you got put in a colony with the rest of the lepers. Ah, stay away from those people. Those people are lepers. Don't go to that colony. That's not like the 13 colonies of America. That's the leper colony. You don't want to be a part of that colony. Fuck, this lady is scaring the shit out of me. Anyway, who needs Disneyland in Florida when you have disfiguring sores and muscle weakness? That's the kind of shit that puts Florida on the map, though. I'll tell you that, man. Can't wait to see leper colonies make a comeback. That's going to be a lot of fun. And now let's hit the beach real quick where a coastal stroll turned into a shocking discovery. 55-gallon drum washed up on the shores of Malibu here in California. And what did it contain? You guessed it. A dead body. Talk about a romantic beach getaway. I mean, forget finding seashells and, and or whatever the fuck. Because finding a, de- new, a dead body is the new thing to do on the beaches here in California. So get out there and go search for dead people in barrels or just hang out. Nobody knows who this person is. Nobody knows where this thing came from. Is the dead body in a barrel? The barrel washed up on the shore and they opened it and there's a body in there. Fucking A. That's terrifying. But I mean, who won't want to bring home such a unique souvenir from their vacation? You know what I'm saying? You find a dead body, cut a piece off. Bring it back. Show the family. It's a good time. Speaking of vacation, it's time to take a trip over to China where the Hangzhou Zoo, I think is how you say it, is facing some serious criticism or accusations, I guess I should say. Rumors have been circulating that some of their bears may actually be humans in disguise. China's dressing up people as bears for what? So they can wave at people? I'll tell you what, when I when I was growing up in Cleveland, we had there was a grizzly bear at the zoo, the, the Metro Park Zoo in Cleveland, Ohio. And that fucking grizzly bear used to wave at people. It would stand on its legs and it'd be like, ah, I'm a bear. Hey bear. <laughs> but China apparently is now listen, I don't know if they're really doing that. They came out and have China has assured the world that they are in fact bears. Which makes me think they really aren't bears because anything China says, I don't believe. But who knows? Maybe they are. I don't know. They pay people to get dressed up in bear suits. I don't know. People are fucking stupid, man. I have no idea. And speaking of stupid people, how about this guy? Frenchman Remy Enigma, also known as Remy Loose City. I think that's how you say it. I'm sure you've seen video. Like if you're a sub club member, you can see this picture of this dude. He has done many, many videos uh, online of of just being a daredevil, jumping across. Like even just looking at this picture, I get dizzy. Like this guy is insane what he used to do. He was a daredevil. He had a taste for adrenaline, an unquestionable sense of self-preservation. Uh, he would post all his videos on social media, and he would just show off these death-defying stunts. But alas, his journey has come to a tragic end. In what way? How would you expect a daredevil who jumps from building to building to die? He fell off a fucking building. 68th floor of a building in Hong Kong. Well, he fell out of a window. So I'm feeling like maybe he might have got pushed. Like he fell out of a window in a penthouse in Hong Kong. Yeah, somebody probably pushed his ass out there. They say the sky's the limit, but not for Remy. Seems like maybe the ground was his final destination. Nah, but I should get a little drum. I'm just kidding. That wasn't funny at all. Who cares? But the guy's dead. So here, make that be a lesson to you, kids. How about don't jump off buildings? I'm just going to throw that out there. You know, do what you want with it. It's fine. I just think like, stay safe. You know what I mean? Like, don't, don't jump off buildings. Don't hang glide. Don't jump out of airplanes doing stupid shit like that. Travel safely, travel on a plane. If you got to get somewhere far away, don't, I don't fucking know what people do. Don't do stupid shit. Just do things safe. Just travel safe. I don't know. This guy's not traveling. He's just falling off fucking buildings. I'm just trying to figure out the best way to segue into this next thing. Ah, the joys of travel. Look at this guy. Look at that. That's a big guy right there. Just when you think you can't get any more uncomfortable, along comes a plus-size passenger who discovered the ultimate flight dilemma. We already know flying sucks. You can't fit in the seats barely. Your knees are cramped up in your neck. If you're tall, just not comfortable. Everything about it sucks. Anyway, after enduring enduring a grueling six-and-a-half-hour journey, this guy... After he got to his destination, turned out he was stuck in his seat. This guy was stuck for three hours in his seat after landing. Apparently, even the roomiest seats in first class, because that's where he sat. Now, this probably isn't, the, the, this is just a picture of a fat guy in a picture, a fat guy in a plane, but that's not the guy. Or I said it wasn't even a guy, but it was a woman, I believe. I'm over here saying it's a guy, it's a woman. 
but she was in first class. She got first class seats because her big butt isn't going to fit in the regular one. So she's like, I'll just get first class. It's fine. I don't have to worry about it. Well, that wasn't good enough for her fucking girth. Eventually, emergency crews had to be called and they had to remove the fucking door of the plane. And then they used a, ho- they had to hoist her out of the plane and free this lady from her f- seat in prison on an airplane. Speaking of prison, <laughs> it's time for a thrilling jailbreak story. A prisoner whose name remains a mystery decided to seize the opportunity of freedom. In a daring escape, he managed to slip away from the security at the Lee County Jail in Pennsylvania. Of course it happened in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania sucks. Everything about Pennsylvania is terrible. I, I People get mad at me when I say things like that about Pennsylvania. I'm like, no, Pennsylvania sucks. It is what it is. You can't be mad at me for the fact that Pennsylvania sucks. I have nothing to do with it. That's just who they are. They're shit. So, and, and I can say that because I grew up in Ohio. All right. But I will now, now on the other side of things, when it comes to Pennsylvania, if it's fall, like end of September, October, and you're driving across Pennsylvania, it's beautiful. The colors are beautiful. I'll give you that because you see all these fucking trees and they're all changing colors. Like it's insane. You don't see that out here in California. It's pretty wild. But that's the only good thing Pennsylvania has going for it because Schittsburg sucks and Philadelphia is terrible. Plus, Amish people bug me. Well, not really the Amish. It's the Mennonites. Anyway, I, I got to move on and talk about this fucking idiot here. Uh, so he tried to escape, but his 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 liberty was short-lived, I suppose, because in a twist of fate, he was apprehended just 10 minutes later. And you'll never guess where. The guy went to a Banana Joe's. You know what that is? It's a nightclub. The guy broke out of jail and went to a fucking club. <sighs> people are so stupid. This is what the, this is WTF news. So, I mean, it is what it is. That's what you get. Now let's move on to this next story. Finally, weekend of Bernie's a story that takes us to Ireland, a land of leprechauns, rainbows, and apparently questionable life choices. Delkin Huffney and Gareth Coakley thought dragging a lifeless body into the post office was the perfect way to collect the pension. But surprise, surprise, surprise. The guy they were carrying actually was dead. Already dead. They go to the post office and they're trying to go get the pension and and they're like, this guy's dead. He's been dead. Why are you going to get a pension for a dead guy? Why are you carrying a dead body around, you fucking idiots? Wow. Anyway, so people are stupid and that's the, there, there you go. I've updated you on the biggest news stories of the day, of the world, of the week. I'm just kidding. None of these stories are that important. And usually on Wednesdays, I tend to have some sort of important conversation, story, whatever. I got to take a drink of my coffee. It's early. But today's a special Wednesday. So I I don't want to get too heavy into the politics and the conspiracies like I usually do because I have a special guest on the show today. I already told you at the beginning of the show that one of my good friends from that damn show, for my former co-host, my former co-worker is joining me. By the way, I'll have another special guest on Friday that you're not going to want to miss on Freeloader Friday Live. That will be a live show. So if you have questions for that particular guest, you're definitely going to want to tune in for that. I'll, I'll post about it on social media so you know who that is. But right now, let's welcome to the Mikey Podcast, my good friend, Ian Massengale. Is it Yingling? Yingling. Yeah, of course. Is that stuff just readily available over there? Oh, yeah. Any gas station. Damn. I didn't know that. I know that it's like, you know, this from Pennsylvania, but I didn't know that they had it all over Florida, too. Maybe I did know that. Yeah, there's a... uh... There's a distiller or brewery or whatever you want to call it. I think it's in Jacksonville. That's why we have it down here in the south. But it doesn't reach any further than like Louisiana. Oh, oh all right. Well, whatever. Anyway, welcome skip. to the show, dude. How the hell are you? I'm good. I'm good. Ready to be back for at least a week or so. Probably yeah, uh, so that, about 10 days. Well, let's talk about that for a minute then. Um, so that's happening August 8th. I'm pretty excited about that too because I've been promoting the fuck out of it for the Mikey meetup thing, which I appreciate you letting me be a part of that. Uh, it's pretty cool. How who's all going to be there? Like, what are the what are these comedians? Are you headlining it, or is this one of those things where you're just kind of talking in between comedians? What's the deal? I haven't decided what I'm going to do. Uh, I could host it, or I could headline it. Uh, it's not really. Uh, it's kind of sort of like a get together for everybody who wanted to come see me. So I feel like I shouldn't. I should probably not waste their time and just you know 
chit chat in between. I probably should do at least, you know, a good 15 minutes or so. Yeah. But, uh, I did, I, I don't really, I haven't figured that out yet because I, it's just, a, it's just a really excuse to, you know, get everybody together and do another show. Cause I haven't done in a while. Everybody's asking me when I'm going to come back. So I thought I'd give them what they wanted because not everybody's going to get to see me. I mean, yeah. I'll, I'll throw it out now. Uh, this fr- or Friday, the fourth is when I land, I'll land at like 1130 and I'll probably go to players that night. But other than that, you're probably not going to see me very often. Cause you know, I'm preparing for a wedding. Is that why you really, so there's a wedding. When's the wedding? It is the 12th. Okay. So I'll be there. I'm, I'm I've planned on being there for a, like an entire week beforehand. See everybody I can, you know, hang out. And then the wedding's on a Saturday and then I'm leaving Sunday. Damn. All right. So I'll be there for I'll be there for ten days. So I just yeah. I, norm, a lot of my friends who are that live here they're only coming for like literally three days. I'm like no, I use, I lived there for six years. I got to see some people. Yeah, no shit. I, I, do you miss it? Any? Do you miss California at all or Sacramento? People ask me that all the time. I do not miss <laughs> how much it costs. That is literally the only sure. thing. I I miss so much. I, I it's really the people that I miss. I don't miss our yeah. old job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen, <laughs> I've seen that dumpster f- burning from here. I can well, smell it. Br- it's amazing. Since you brought it up, we should talk about it for a minute. Then, uh, so obviously you've been watching and following this drama. You know, Rob's no longer there. He's kind of falling apart too. His morning show seems to be. I don't even know what the fuck's going on. I don't know anything either. And people ask me, like, I, I, I dude, I, <laughs> I, I, I moved away from that crap. I have nothing mm-hmm. to do with it. They ask me, what's going on with Rob? understand something i never met the man not <laughs> once in six years did i ever meet rob i never met no. any of them I, I i i saw uh what's his name brandon in passing never met him i don't know any of these people and so weird. People, people ask me all the time like have you listened to the new show not once not, not once either once not even but by I, accident like no, i avoided it i didn't tune in on their first day out of curiosity i just didn't care but yeah. uh, I've I've heard from other sources in the industry that they do not like this man. They don't. They don't like who? Uh, I don't even know the guy's name. The, the, the new host. guy? Yeah. Oh, uh, I didn't. I didn't know that. I I can say that from what I've heard, not from anybody in the industry, but just from Dammits and people, and I'm sure you've probably heard this too. Is like these people are like basically doing our show, like what a version that, yeah. of what we were doing, only with their thing. So, a lot of the same I, games. I, not only did I hear it so often, I, I saw it in the comments, and I think it's hilarious <laughs> that they turned commenting off. I'm so proud of our, our listeners for that. I know. I yeah, should it, <laughs> No, it means so much, dude. It, it like it makes you feel good a little bit. Like yeah. they, people care. You bullied an entire station into turning the comments <laughs> off. Just <laughs> pat yourselves on the back for that one. It's hilarious. Oh, yeah, the 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 dammits and the people are fucking ruthless to them, dude. I, I and then I get so many messages, and anytime I post anything about it, people are like, "Fuck that station! I don't listen anymore." Well, I mean, they're they're like they're tenth or eleventh in the market, like they're yeah. not doing well at all. That's another thing is like I I never listen to the show, but don't think for a second that we don't have the ability to look at ratings. Yeah. So you take a show that can't even win in the afternoons, can't even place fifth. They're like eleventh, yeah. and what's what's their great idea? Let's move them to mornings. I'm sure they'll do great. It doesn't make any sense to me. And apparently, I don't know what they're going to do with afternoons now, too. Uh, I, I'm assuming they're going to hire another show or maybe do some sort of Odyssey syndicated crap. Who knows? I don't know. They might just keep it to, you know, they can't afford anybody. They might just give it to Mickey. And I, I did love Mickey to death. I Leave her alone. Okay, guys? I, yeah. She's a nice person. She is. I say that I all the time, that. too. She's a very nice person, and she she lo- she definitely loves Sacramento. She loves the community. She does everything she can. So she's not yeah. she's not a bad person. She's one of the good people. She's just trying to do her job. You That's know? the thing. It's like I, I understand what she does and why she does it because she has to play ball. So yeah. you know she she gives she she loves what she does. So she gives a lot of you know love to the station. Even though I'm I'm not going to assume anything about Mickey, but I'm assuming she knows that just like everybody else, this sec- this ship is sinking. But yeah. do you do you ride it out or you know do you do you start working on your air check and you know keep an eye out for other jobs in the in the in the market? I don't That's know. That's the smart thing for her to do. She needs to be careful. I, I don't know what they're gonna do over there though, man. They're like I have no idea. I have no what can they do? They're gonna have to flip formats or sell the station or something. I, like, I don't know. They gotta make a profit somehow. So sell the I station. Know. I mean it's a valuable station. Well, it was, mm-hmm. but uh you can't. You, you you can't really sell confidence in your investors when you're delisted from the damn uh, New York Stock Exchange, which was hilarious to me. 
that was one of the greatest days of my life. Not gonna lie, that was hilarious. And then, and then, so with the Rob situation, like this is also to me, like I don't want to beat a guy when he's down, but this dude is down. Like he is falling off the fucking. I don't I know have what the fuck. zero he, idea what's going on. He's drinking himself into a stupor. Like from what I understand, somebody's posting court documents online about the guy. He's got all kinds of personal shit happening. He's his show is not on 98 Rock. It's it's on the in Reno, but then he took a week off and Brandon was hosting the show and he fell and busted his face up. It was crazy. Oh, right? like, all kinds of bad stuff. Well, damn. Yeah, I didn't know any of that because I, I don't I don't really follow what goes on in his personal life. I wasn't <laughs> following him on Facebook or anything. The, the only thing I ever know about what goes on with Rob is uh, what gets posted in the uh, that damn fan page or whatever when people start talking yeah. about that. I I don't know anything. I I no. never have because I don't care. Like yeah, I said, I, never met the man. I know. S same. I don't really care either. I did. I thought it was interesting to see that that he like I don't know. He was having some serious issues, and and, he, and I don't want him to like completely ruin his career. So that's kind of just what I thought was like, dude, you need to get your shit together, or yeah. you're not gonna have anything going on. But you got kind of like got a lot going on now too. So you're on the air in Florida, right? You got this radio show. Yeah, I, I'm doing afternoons on the station that I came from because uh, they, the 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 old lady that was in charge, or she wasn't in charge when I was working there, but they moved her up to general manager, and she's like, you know, I've, I I I miss having you back here. I was like, I would love to come back, you know, because I'm gonna be moving back anyway, and you know, but I'm not. Don't don't get it twisted. I'm not coming back for that peanuts that you used to pay me before. Yeah. So you got you're gonna you got to have a serious conversation with whoever. It's like all right. And they talked about it and I, you know, got to do my radio again, but which is weird because I'm by myself, which I've never been able to, I've never done before. So I've had months trying to that. figure that out. So that's just you. It's no, you don't have anybody in there with you. You're just kind of doing your thing. You're playing music and shit. Yeah. Uh, I'm basically doing what, you know, the, uh, the single, uh, guy does like, I'm just, I'm, I talk when I can and talk for as long as I can until I run out of shit to talk about. Then I'm like, all right, here's, here's Led Zeppelin or whatever. Uh, like, basically what Pat Martin does. Yeah, that's not so bad. That's kind of a fun job to have. Uh, it is, but I miss I miss being able to feed off of people. Oh, I'm sure, man. I think about that all the time. And I do these podcasts. I do three a week, and I'm like, fuck. I start doing doing like Friday lives, which makes it a little bit more fun because now I have people to communicate with and talk to, and I'm streaming it and shit. So that's fun too. But man, I do miss doing a show. Um, it, with that being said, well, a couple weeks I want to ask you this: like, if a job came up, are you are you active? I'm sure maybe you don't want to say this, but are you actively looking or or like are you open? I'm, I would, I'm not, I'm not looking, uh, because I, I, another reason I moved back here is to be back, uh, near my kid who I get to see all the time, That's but, good. uh, it, it can't be like, if I, if it just, somebody came up to me and asked me, it's, there's gotta be so many things that I, I would need to, cause I'm not, I can't, I can't do the whole move thing again for the, yeah. the shit that 98 rock was paying me. Like, you know what they were paying me and Larry, it was garbage. And I, I would never do that again, ever. No, like, I, I wouldn't either. Fuck that. It's, it's it's like it's like Godfather. You you have to make me an offer. I cannot refuse. Yeah, and that makes there, a lot of sense. There's just there's just no jobs in this in this industry like that anymore because you know people just want to they want to voice track every everything and it, it's no. actually kind of embarrassing that it's gotten that way. It is embarrassing and it sounds terrible and I mean the whole industry is a little bit embarrassing there's a few little gems here and there that are still trying to do it and still killing it and and having fun with radio and and whatever but man most of the industry is pretty much dead is that so what about stroke i have to ask you this if you're talking about the industry being dead has, has he given up on radio i haven't heard from him in so long i miss the guy i actually don't know if he's given up or not i know that he's kind of you know taking a break doing his own thing uh right. i i've i've seen him a couple times since we moved back i'll actually see him on tuesday but uh, I, it's just not something that we talk about because uh, it's we're just trying to reestablish our lives here. And yeah. I don't know if that's what he's leaning up towards. I think when we first moved back, he was talking to certain people other places. But uh, I don't know where that went. Uh, yeah. I think maybe I don't I don't think the offer was good enough, if I'm being honest. I think that's what ended up happening. Oh, well, it makes but, sense. Uh, yeah. But other than that, I, I don't think he's given up. I think he just wants a break from it all because I, I and I totally get that. Oh, absolutely dude we, we were in a toxic work environment like mm -hmm. the first few years of our show everything was fucking great but things got pretty toxic when new management came in and then the pandemic happened and things just got worse and worse and worse it was not it was not good yeah and it wasn't even you know our direct new manager because i i love every every g or not gm but uh uh 
guy that we are, our Petermans and our Vince McMahons and yes. even, um, I forgot what the other guy's name was. Joe. Joe. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, but uh, yeah, it was everybody above him that was making them have to make these terrible decisions. I never blamed them for anything. They made, and especially Joe, because you could just tell the stress was su- seriously for, for a guy who only worked there a year. Yeah. I've never seen a more stressed out fucking manager in my life. I know, dude. He he was put through the ringer there. It's just like, like they just hired him to come in and make cuts and fire people, and then they were gonna fucking let him go. Like it's just, I feel bad for the guy. Bought fucking bought a house and shit, but he's good now, man. He's in Texas. He's killing it. Yeah, because that's what uh, that's what happens with our bosses. They all they somehow get relegated <laughs> to Texas. I don't know how that keeps happening. I don't know either, but it's terrible. The new guy over at ninety eight Rock. You never got a chance to meet him, but I'm sure you've heard a lot about him. He's a fucking douchebag. Yeah, I've heard from multiple people, including uh, I heard from you on that one time where you just went off on that podcast. That was fun. Yes. That and was good... I've, heard, I've heard from Stroke because uh, we lived together. So I heard it every day. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, that guy's just was fucking awful. And I don't know. He's he's definitely tearing that radio station apart. So are you like you you're back in Florida? This is it. These, you're going to stay there. You know, you're this is now you're just rebuilding your life. You got the radio show going on. I think, man, I think this is a good opportunity for you. How are you feeling about things over there? Are you still doing comedy too? Oh yeah. Uh I had I had to take a little break because before I was doing radio, uh I was I was serving a few tables here and there, and then I did both and I, I just had no time for anything, but I left the serving job to focus on doing stand-up again full time. And this will actually be a good way to get back into it because it's been like three months since I've been on stage. So being in Sacramento around uh, all the people that I've that I that I basically built uh, the the shows that I used to do with having them back and just really getting me uh, re-energized and I'm gonna come back home and do it some more. But I'm just super excited to get back on stage finally because I I knew for a fact that I could get the guy from Sully's who I absolutely love. Uh, Chris, huge yes. shout out! Uh, like he was a huge supporter of our show. Yeah, and I knew as soon as I asked him, I'm like, hey, I'm coming back. Can I do a show? He's like, absolutely. Yeah, and, he's a good guy. Yeah, he's a great dude. Uh, looking forward to being back at Sully's. That you definitely need to. You guys definitely need to come out who are listening because that is one of my favorite bars. Like I didn't want to do it anywhere else. I yeah. could have shopped around to other places I've done it before, but I wanted to do it at Sully's. Dude, the bar is great. It's a good time. The food is good. The beer is always cold. Everybody that works there is always really down to earth. It's it's just always been a good time. And how many times have we done just random that damn show events or just showed up there drinking and stuff? Man, it's always a good place. Yeah, all the time. And he's always like, you, you know, you guys pop in anytime. You guys want to watch the Super Bowl? I'll get your table up front yep. in front of the big screen. I'm like, shit. Yeah. So, yeah, that was that was always fun. So I, I it was no question where I wanted to do it. That's good. That's good. I think you should keep definitely keep doing the, the comedy thing, man. But I don't want you this to be like I want you to come back to keep coming back here and keep doing shit like that's I realize that you're out here for a wedding and stuff, but you could probably still continue to book shows and do things. I just know that's kind of expensive. Well, that wasn't. uh that was never in question. I was always going to come back every, at least because we, we used, when we had vacations, I always came home, but True. now that I'm home, I can come there at least. I'll, I'll, I plan on showing up at least twice a year for nice. at least, at least a week. Cause I need a vacation and I can't vacation here anymore. So I, and yeah. I, I left so many people back in Sacramento that I want to see again that, you know, especially my best friend in the entire world, whose wedding I'm actually being the best man of. I can't just not see him again. I got to come back at least twice a year. I was kind of funny. He got up and moved out here out to california basically to kind of come hang with you and then you left his ass well that ain't my fault that's uh 98 rocks fault and that's everybody, true. everybody asked me like why'd you move i said because the job that i moved for did not exist anymore and yeah. it's not it's not like you know we yes and no we were we were let go but they just couldn't afford us anymore that's real. No, that's the real that's that's really the issue is like yeah we were technically fired but no we weren't we were laid off because yeah. they ran the company into the ground. That that's exactly what it is. Which is why like, that's why there's nothing there. That's why they're not paying anybody to do anything. They have they have the morning show and, and Mickey who probably get makes p- terrible money, and then everything else is pretty much outsourced and or or just done through corporate. They just have no money. You could even like just from what people have told me, I can tell the content that's coming from these people. Like the even the interviews and shit, it's all just corporate mandated drip down handed down from corporate do this say that and we'll put you on and we'll do you know we'll put you on the app and we'll give you these videos and shit it's it's, it's very really it's very cliche yes radio and if mickey is making anything like what they paid me and lara i can guarantee you it, it it's dog shit it, oh i'm sure it is i'm sure that's what she's but you can't possibly be making more than that 
No, and there, it, it sucks because there are so many people that in that building that I actually did like, and I wish the best for them. Yeah. But I, I don't even know how many of them are still there. Like, uh, you know, we had a couple salespeople that, that were great people. I don't no. know if they've jumped ship or not. I'm sure most of them are gone, dude. I don't know who's there. I know that a couple of the guys from KSFM are gone. Like, I mean, it's there's been cuts. Most of the people that you and I knew or had any sort of relationship with are gone. Like, except for the people over at the end, I think they're all still there. But but 98 Rock is doing better than the end. They're in 12th place, and so I don't know how they're surviving. But whatever. That's not much better though, because they were because 98 Rock's in 11th. Yeah, I know. So, but, but that that end morning show, like, I mean, I love they're good people as these just regular people, but. How long can they continue to support that show with with those terrible ratings? Like, it just doesn't make any sense. Well, with them, it was always their podcast numbers, and you know that. True, true. Oh yeah, you you still doing your podcast too, right? Oh yeah, uh, still How's doing. That? The, it's it's not it's it's not Mikey show or Mikey podcast. <laughs> we just do it for fun. And yeah, like we're not try, we're not trying to get rich off of it. It's literally been an excuse for us to stay in touch this, for like the last couple of years, even though. Uh, uh, I the other guy that was on our show, he lived here. Now I see him all the time, and I never see Seth. That, that's pretty but funny, that's, actually. Yeah, but it's just it's just our way to stay in touch. Uh, it's it, we do it for fun. If if we if we get like maybe fifty listens in a week, we're happy. That yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah, no, I, any any listen I think is important, no matter what, because it just means somebody went out of the way to take a listen to your stuff, and I appreciate yeah. that. So even though I'm ninety percent sure, like his girlfriend just leaves us on her Alexa and leaves the house. Just let it play. Hey man, yeah. it works, right? That's it what you works. gotta do. You get what you gotta fucking do. That means that she loves him, and I'm yeah, like, I love that. Something like that, I guess. So, are you single out there? You're, you're, are you hooked up? What's your, what you got going on? No, I've, I've been single for since like November or something, and I'm not looking for anything in particular. I just, you know, like I said, I'm, I am in no position to be in a relationship anyway because <laughs> I'm still trying to build a life out here. Like I'm not even close to being settled down. Yeah, and sure. you know the last relationship I was in, it was just, it was unbeatable, if that makes sense. Dude, yeah, she's pretty. She's pretty fucking cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I think if, if we're we talking about the same person here, I believe. Of course we are. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> make ain't, sure. no, ain't no Florida bitches out here gonna compete yeah. with that. All right. You know she's probably gonna listen to this. And be like, oh my god, he's so sweet. I can't believe he said that. <laughs> <laughs> I had I didn't even I didn't I didn't even think about that. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I know you, man. I know what you got going on, man. I got to tell you, dude. It's been I, I fucking I miss doing the show with you guys. I miss doing the show with you. I just miss bullshitting with you guys. It's fucking. It sucks. Right? Do I have a I doing just anything that isn't radio sucks. Yeah, I remember because I was like when when I knew I was going to get hired at the at this radio station that I'm at now, but just that waiting period. I'm serving tables. I'm like. I used to be famous. <laughs> right. Shit. <laughs> like I can't go to any concerts anymore. I walk into a concert and I'm like, get treated like shit. What is this? I don't know. Let's get out of here. I did the same thing. Cause they, they, cause there was a, uh, there was a huge concert for like the, this biker rally and, you know, uh, Rob zombie was there. And so was Jackal and um, so many other people. And like, man, how much are tickets going for? I'm like, I don't fucking know. I don't pay for tickets. Yeah, exactly. I paid for tickets since I was 20 years old. I don't, I don't even know the going price of those anymore. How the fuck would I know? Too much, dude. I just took my, you're not going to believe this, but maybe you will. I know what you did. I was going to ask you, <laughs> how did you even afford Taylor Swift tickets? How did you well, even- I will tell you, Mandy made that happen and we got them in November. So that when they went on sale, like she did some sort of Capital One pre sale type thing or whatever, a VIP sale. I don't know. So that's the only way. And we sat online. She sat on click and click and click and over and over and over until she finally got tickets. And we just grabbed whatever we got. We were up into section 300, which was fine anyway, because it was just like, I'm not going to lie. I'm not a Swifty or anything, but holy shit, what an experience that was. And my daughter was going crazy. There's fireworks everywhere. It was a really good time. You could have easily gotten at least maybe three times what you paid for, like a, a week leading out to that concert, and you'd you just been set. Like that's what I would have done if that's I got right. tickets to Taylor, if I got tickets to Taylor Swift. I'm selling them. I'm selling the shit out of them. I brought that up a couple of times to Mandy, and she was not. She was not having that. There was no way. I mean, you can't put a price on memories, but uh, true, that is true. I can, <laughs> but it was, and that it was is three times their worth. It was a really, really good time, and like I said, my daughter it was for her birthday too, so it was it just worked out really well. It was a lot of fun, but that was that's the last that I hadn't been to, to aftershock, and then nothing, and then Taylor Swift, and now hopefully, as like, I'm doing an aftershock giveaway, and I've kind of hooked up with those guys. I, I think I'm going to get some media passes. I'm not sure, but we'll um, well, that'd be dope. Uh, but that won't, I won't be at another concert until then. Like all I'm going to is whatever I can get 
I I I I'm I have to be at a concert at least once a month because oh, uh, we have we have these giveaways where if you win tickets, you get to ride the party bus from here to the venue, and the venue's like an hour away. The I saw Steel Panther on Friday; they fucking rocked. That's last awesome. Month, last month I saw Fozzie and then Bad Flower the month before, so I've no shortage of concerts. Even though some of these I don't even want to go to because I have to babysit these fucking listeners, which is awful. That's the worst thing ever. That was one of the things I hated about radio is if you get put in that position where you're the one in charge of a group of fucking drunk listeners. Like I not mm-hmm. don't put me in charge of these it's, people. It's a bad yeah. idea. I have to, I, I, before we even take off, I have to tell everybody, do not fight on this bus. Do not piss on this bus because both of those <laughs> things have happened and those things happened on the first ride that I had, that, that I was on. I'm like, this, it's, it's fun because we get to drink all the way there, but when we're on the way back, everyone's tired or they're just too drunk yeah. and they're, they're just having way too much fun. And I'm just like, guys, to concerts, concerts wear me out. A lot of people are like, yeah, I go to the after party. No, not me. I want to go no. fucking home. Yeah, that shit is exhausting. Plus, like, yeah, you just want to get home and go to bed. You got a life. You got work to do and shit. But that's cool that you guys are still, that you guys do stuff. Like, I mean, just think about 98 Rock. We weren't doing shit the last few months that we were there. They didn't let us. Like, they wanted to blame the pandemic, but they're like, no, it just costs too much. If the if the event organizer will pay for it, then we'll slap our name on it. Like, no, that's let's the not. Why, cause, thing. Yeah, because why risk money that we know we'll get, we'll get a return? Like, the yeah. barbecue. Like, how fucking cool is it, though, that you guys are actually... Do, like, I see some stations in the market that do small things here and there. It's like the fucking Christian station's always doing stuff, or the country station. They're killing it. But outside of that, nobody else is doing anything. It's just refreshing to see a rock station having a fucking party bus and stuff. That's cool. Yeah, and they were already doing that, but that's one of the things that I told them when they were interviewing me. I was like, look, when I, when I worked here, and when I worked at 98 Rock, you know, we we ha- we were out doing stuff. And they, they, they 100% agreed. And uh, they're like, I'm like, look, I want to be, I want to be out as often as I can. I want to be, you know, I want to be the face of this station. If I can be, I just want to, I just want to be out doing stuff. They're like, well, do you want to ride the party bus to, to the concerts? I'm like, I love concerts. I want to get on the party bus. Let's go. And then I got on the party bus. I'm like, this is exhausting, but I'll, <laughs> but, I'm, but, but, I'll, but, I'll, but I'll do it. No, I, I don't, I don't mind it. It's just, there's some shows that I don't care about. You know what I mean? Like, but I like have to be <laughs> No, Sorry. I liked Bad Flower, but just... uh, the Fozzie show that I went to, Fozzie wasn't even the opener. Really? It was, it was Ugly Kid Joe. And I'm like, wait, oh my God. that makes no sense. And Fozzie goes on, they kill it like they were one to do. And then when they get off stage, half the crowd just fucking took off. Who wants to stay and see Ugly Kid Joe sing that one song? Yeah, you mean the song they're gonna say for the very end because they yeah, did. Fuck that. That sucks. <laughs> you that have to sit through terrible. all of this just to get that <laughs> one song that you kinda know and you don't really love. Yeah, but you're it's just nostalgic. So you're like, ah, eh, it's right. fine. Exactly. <laughs> that's it. Shit, that's funny as hell though. I mean, I, I mean, like I said, it's it's cool to see radio stations doing stuff. It's it's like that's why I'm trying to do stuff with the podcast again. So thank you for letting me fucking jump on this thing. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Well, yeah, if I could keep what I said, yeah, man. No, I want to do so. If you do it again, if you anytime you come out, man, let me know. I'll fucking promote the shit. I'll get the word out there because I know the dammits are going to want to know about it. I don't know how much you can talk about it on air in in Florida. Not that it matters much because I don't think anybody in California is really listening to that. Oh, I know. I, I know one person is, and uh, I know one person they, is too. They they promote that shit every single day. I like. I I wonder if they're actually listening or they're just doing it to be nice because. I know, I know my buddy Seth doesn't listen every day, but sometimes he'll he'll hit me up. I was like, man, I heard what you said earlier. That was funny. But this person will do it every single day. And if they forget, they're like, oh, shit, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> I, 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 meant, I meant to post this yesterday. Go listen to Ian. I don't That's nice, know. though. It's very nice. But I don't think they're listening every single day because no. if I didn't have to be there, I wouldn't listen every day. I get it. I totally yeah, get it. My voice is annoying as shit. I, trust me, I know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Dude, it was good talking to you. I'm not going to keep you too long. Plus, it's Sunday. I want to go hang out with the wife and everything. So um, Don't forget, August 8th. August 8th. 8 o'clock. Sully's 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock. I'm going to get there so people can start getting there early. We can fill that place up. Let's pack that fucking house. Yeah, no, get there early because the show starts today. So be there. Yeah. You know, Get your food and your beer and all that shit and find a good place to sit absolutely it's there's gonna be a lot of people it looks like a lot of people are planning on being there so i think it's gonna be a lot of fun man peace out you all right brother i will talk to you soon i'll see, actually see you then man have a good night take it easy guys see ya the mikey podcast